Welcome back, Dean Diplock from Reppy House Resort in Castle Bar, County Mayo, is with us. And this morning he's bringing us a taste of his homeland. Good morning, Good morning, Chef. Dean. Good morning, good morning. Yes, yeah, we've South moved Africa on. to the kitchen. We've do, moved on a little bit as well. I'm now at the Reppy House Resort. And how are you getting County on? County Mayo, it's fantastic. Wilson Bird and his team have been very inviting. Oh. Uh, you must follow our uh, food expedition that we're going to be doing in the County Mayo so I can learn what's available up there on our Instagram page at Breffy House it's Hotel. It's exciting as a chef, you know, yeah. that you get to discover what's around you, new, new, new products. Yeah, yeah. Totally new. So I don't know the area and I'm going out and meeting suppliers and producers in the area. It's, it's a lot of fun. This fun ain't fun. local to Mayo. No, that's this not local. This is South Africa, yeah. baby. This is kind of cooking, but it's not cooking. So, so you're okay. introducing Biltong. Well, it's actually readily available in Ireland. You look, it's in Lidl's, it's in Tesco's. Uh, it's, it's a very high protein snack, uh, very low fat if you take all the fat off it as well, and very healthy for you. Um, so in the Lions tour that's going on at the moment, this is the main snack with beer anywhere in the country. So really? it's being consumed in large quantities. So what is what it? What is it? Okay, so <laughs> Biltong is traditionally, how it actually came about was, uh, it's like a South African version of beef jerky. Uh, the, the American beef jerky is thinned out uh, meat that is put uh, uh, over smoking fire and basically smoked and dried that way. This, on the other hand, was created when the South African uh, Boer foot trekkers left the Cape Town area um, because of British rule and moved into the hinterland. And as they killed game, etc., there was no fridge refrigeration. So this is a way of preserving. The main ingredients they would have used there was salt, pepper, and coriander. And they would air dry in the, in the uh, foot tracker wagons as they traveled. And it, all it is is literally air dried beef we're using this time, um, but not, not game, but it is readily available. You can do, use game as well if you so like. So traditionally it would have been game? Would it? Traditionally it would yeah, have been yeah, game, okay. but then beef, you know, t taken over. And how how long does this take? And assuming we don't have one of these wonderful machines at home. Well, this we I made myself and it's very easy to make one. Um, it's, right. it's, yeah, That's absolutely. a whole other segment. <laughs> there. They're very easy to make, but basically it's you're drawing air out and drawing air in underneath it. And as it circulates, it's drying. It takes about okay. three to five days, depending on how wet or dry you like your biltong, because okay. it, it, there, it can be very hard or it can be quite soft. So how do we make it? Very simply, I have got our coriander seeds, which we roughly crush off the toasting slightly. Okay. Okay, so those are gonna go in. This is the main flavor spice that you will get. Now, I'm making my own um, spice now, but you can buy them from the South African shop, for instance. Uh, oh, Tell okay. Kim I sent you. Uh, it's available there. The Freddie Hirsch product is probably the most popular one. But having said that, you can make it. Now, this is my own recipe. There are so many varieties of, of it, obviously. So again, the main preservative is our salt, and I've just got coarse salt. Um, things have improved a little bit these days. We no longer uh, have to just use salt. We can use um, beef granules, beef stock granules, which will give you some fabulous flavor. Brown sugar, okay. that goes in. Our pepper, coarse black pepper, fine white pepper as well. Then we put in some garlic powder. I have ground uh, coriander. There's a lot going on there. Some clove, exactly. And this is all for and the rub. And then our onion spice. It's all for the rub, okay. exactly. Wow. And we mix it up. Right, so here's some that I had made earlier. I tray it out onto a flat tray. And then another preservative is our vinegar. Now, we, I'm adding Worcester sauce for extra flavor, four parts to one. I put it in a little spray bottle. And this is our beef. Now, the beef is cut relatively thick, about two and a half centimeters. And what kind of beef right. is that? This is rump from okay. my local okay. butcher up the road. And we, you, can, you can soak it in the vinegar and uh, Worcester sauce solution, but it's not necessary. All you want to do is really coat it nicely. It's more for sticking on and preserving, killing any bacteria on the outside. The vinegar acid will help with that. Right. Does the vinegar start cooking it? It will start, it will start cooking it slightly, yes. But, I mean, mm. we're going to air dry this. It's not something that you're going to worry about. Okay, you don't leave yeah. it overnight or anything. It's just okay. literally just to coat it. Okay. And, and then, did, you, did you mention that you put um, the rub on the hob? Just Did you toast the coriander seeds? The coriander seeds. Yeah. Just, oh, just to bring the out the flavor. Seeds. Just okay. to bring out the flavor. So now I'm going to cover the beef with my rub all the way around, making sure to get the edges as well. You want everything coated. 
And if you wanted, then you could, if there was fat and you could trim the fat off. You could trim it off, but that's the best part. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's always yeah. is the best part. I, I wasn't 100% sure, was it was eaten as a snack or as, you know, a hearty dinner. No, it's a snack. It's, it's a high-protein snack. So it now goes into a plastic container with a grid in the bottom of it just to, to lift it because it's going to release moisture and that's what you want to do. You want to get as much blood out of it as possible. Uh, so when you pack your, you pack your meat on top of each other and it presses it down slightly and you will find this liquid pooling in the bottom overnight. You stick that in your fridge overnight. So and after a, a day, do you discard the liquid or just Yes, no, you just dis uh, discard the liquid, okay. it's gone. So let me just grab this. There's one that we did overnight. Okay. You can see it's quite brown in colour, but yes. that's from the, the um, brief granules that I've used. Okay. And we are now just going to hang it up and allow it, nature to do its own thing. And if you were at home doing this, where would you be hanging it up? I saw it just... Oh, the no, in a room. A um, lot of people use the garages. You can put it in a room. <laughs> um, this will dry itself naturally. I do put a dehumidifier in as well, just to draw some of the moisture sometimes. And it's preferable to do this in winter, when it's colder and drier, yes, course, than in yeah. summertime, really. So that literally just gets hung up and allowed to dry naturally over the coming days. So... Is there, are there schools of thought in terms of how long you need to hang the meat for? Or? Three to five days. Okay. Again, it depends on how... Here's one that's been hanging for four days. Oh. Okay. Right? It's nice and soft for those who... I'm it doesn't look soft. Okay, so I've cut the meat, just to, to point out, with the grain. So as the muscle... Uh, with, you cut with the muscle because when you cut the bolting up, you want to cut across like you cut a steak. Yes. So that it's not as grainy, you know, otherwise it'll yeah, end yeah, up yeah. pulling. Yes. The other thing you do is cut slightly at an angle called cut on the bias. Yeah. And that means you, you get through all the, the tissue and it ends up nice and soft. So literally, I'm cutting the... Slightly across At an angle, yeah. and on the bias. Oh, yes. And you have some in front of you if you would like we to do. try it. Yes, so I'd love to try some. Cheers. You can Never see on the this. inside, it is still a bit wet on the inside. You can dry it all the way through if that's how you prepare, prefer it. But is the little pinky colour in the inside preferable? Like I like it nice and soft thing. like that, absolutely, because it's softer, much, much softer. But a lot, a lot of people, everybody, has, it's like Marmite. It's very tender. Some people really like it and some yeah. people like it really dry and, or the other one really wet. So it's your own personal taste. Nice for the cold beer, Dean. Absolutely, that's yeah. exactly what it's for. That is gorgeous. Thanks, Thank you, really chef. interesting, Dean. Thanks for Something Dan. completely different. Completely different. Magic. Thanks, And Jeff. if you'd like to make it yourself, full <clears throat> recipe details are on our website or you can just call into Dean at Breffy House Resort and try his wares for yourself. Yeah.